Greetings and welcome to video number three in the series in which we build a finger jointed pine cabinet uh, for the little Fender Champ chassis. I tend to build my cabinets around the speaker. So the first thing we have to do is pick out a speaker uh, for our combo amp or for our uh, speaker cabinet that we're going to build and take uh, measurements of it. I picked this a particular speaker. I thought it was a nice one. It's a 10 inch uh, speaker uh, with a nice big ceramic magnet. Then we'll draw some uh, fairly simple plans. I usually go with a one half scale. So if the speaker was 10 uh, and a quarter inches across, then I will draw this about five and one eighth. I leave a little space at the top, bottom and sides and uh, then draw uh, the cabinet around it. And uh, granted, uh, this design will probably change uh, a little bit. It'll mutate over time. But it will give me a good idea of uh, how much lumber I need to buy to build a cabinet. Uh, when you're looking at the different views, I always draw in the transformers and tubes to make sure that there's no clearance issues anywhere. Uh, I tend to make compact cabinets. If you're going to make a much larger cabinet, then really you don't have to worry about interference here because you'll have a lot of, uh, more space than I do in this one. Some of the details of this drawing might not make a lot of sense to you right now, but if you watch the whole video and see how the cabinet goes together, then I think these drawings will make better sense. Now that I've estimated uh, how much lumber I need, I'm going to take off to Home Depot and uh, pick out some nice straight pine board. Well, we're back from Home Depot with the materials to make the cabinet. I've got a scrap here of some half-inch birch plywood that should have enough for the front and back panels. I've got a uh, six-foot uh, one-by-eight of pine for the uh, perimeter of the cabinet, and then a long furring strip that I'll use to make the uh, cleats uh, to hold in the front and rear panels. And now we must have the official sniffing of the plank. Whenever anything new comes here to the workshop, Rusty has to give it his approval. Next, using the trusty table saw, you're going to cut your perimeter planks to exact size and as square as you can make them. In my case, these are the 14 and a halfs and the 13 and a halfs. Next step is going to be to set up the jig to do the finger joints at the ends of each plank. Now for an in-depth demonstration of how to do these box joints and an explanation of how to make the jig, I'm going to send you to another YouTube video. Okay, look up in the description of this video and it will have an address that will send you to a, another site where they will explain exactly how to make the jig and set up and do the box joints. Now using what you learned in that video, you set up your dado blade for a three-quarter inch high cut and a one-half inch wobble. Then using the jig that you made, run a piece of scrap wood through the blade and check the cut, the dimensions. Now how I do that is I made a very precise using oak model of a three-quarter inch uh, high by one half inch wide cut. Fit that into the groove and make sure that it fits snugly and that it's flush at the bottom. Once you've got that, you're set to go. Also this distance from here to the end has to be exactly a half inch also as the video instructed. Now that I've verified that my blade is set properly and that my jig is working, I'm going to start doing the ends of my perimeter planks. Okay, and here's the end result on the first plank. And Notice it doesn't come out exactly even. You have a small tooth here. The other end is exactly the same with the small tooth on the left side. They have to be the same. Okay, so be sure that you start here with your full tooth end up here with your narrow tooth at both ends. Okay, now here's the second uh, side done. And as you can see, they match up precisely. 
and that's important. And both of them have the narrow uh, kind of finger at the left side. Okay, and as I hope was made uh, clear in the video, the 13 and a half inch side will not have a a finger right here, but will have a notch right here. I'll show you in just a second. Now this is the 13 and a half inch side, and you notice instead of the finger here, we have the notch. We use our test oak piece in here and see that it fits in flush here and on the side. So my beginning notch, which is very important, is exactly the way it should be. Okay, so here's the 14 and a half inch side and the 13 and a half, and as you can see, Wherever this one has a finger, this one has a notch. And here at the end where we have the little narrow finger, there is a narrow notch corresponding. If you use your jig properly, this is exactly the way you'll end up. Now if you made your cuts properly, the side and the base should fit together perfectly like this so that when you fold them up here at a 90 degree angle, they make a very, uh, just a perfect solid finger joint, okay, that is flush at the front and at the back. If you don't end up with this, don't feel bad. I didn't either the first time. Uh, it takes a little practice. I just use some scrap wood and, and keep practicing until you can get this type of pattern on both of your pieces. Then when you fit the four pieces together, like this, you end up with a fairly stout box, even without glue. Okay, next I'm going to glue these joints, clamp them, and let them dry overnight. One double check before I do the gluing, and that is to lay this down, set the speaker in place, and I see that I have about an inch top and sides, and a good two and a half inches at the bottom. This leaves me room for my cleats, for my speaker baffle, and for the chassis down here at the bottom. Everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and start the gluing. Now the gluing procedure is very important. I use this Tight Bond 2 glue. Uh, it's available at Home Depot. Squirt about a teaspoonful of it into a plastic lid. Then take your piece, get a paintbrush and apply the glue liberally to all of the surfaces that are going to be touching when the finger joints are closed together. Do all of both ends. There's no need for glue on these ends because they're not touching anything, but everywhere else, the floor of the notch and sides of the notches all the way have to be heavily coated with glue. Once you've done both sides of, say, the floor, then do the mating joint here on one of the sides. Once you've done both ends of the floor and this end, bottom end of the side, fit them together. Don't worry about clamping it or perfect squareness right now. We're going to go to the other side and do the bottom notches. Once you've finished adding the glue to this end of the other side, then fit it into place with the floor. You can wipe away the extra glue. Quite a bit will probably extrude out. Then I use a pipe clamp and some blocks of wood to compress the joint so that all the surfaces are tightly against each other with the glue in between. Then we turn our attention to this end where we will apply the glue to all the notches on both sides and to the uh, top of the cabinet and press them in place and use the uh, pipe clamps to close the joints. Then, after you've got it all clamped together with the pipe clamps, use a right angle to be sure that your corners are square. So you can see this one is, 
this is nice and square. Sometimes they aren't. If it's not, you can run a pipe clamp diagonally from corner to corner and apply a little pressure to bring it into square. Okay, and now it's just going to have to probably take overnight to set up and let the glue harden. Well, the glue is dried overnight and now the box is absolutely rock solid. Uh, we'll see a little detail view here of what the finger joints should look like. Uh, now I've done a little sanding with an electric sander just to smooth things out here and I added a one inch piece to the front like a lip so that I would have about an eight and a half inch uh, depth from front to back so that I would have no clearance issues with the speaker or the chassis and also so that on the rear of the amp the knobs and controls of the chassis would not protrude out the back. Uh, you don't want that because then if you're carrying the amp around you might hit a knob or a switch on some uh, obstruction and cause damage. Okay, so now everything will fit uh, cleanly within the cabinet. Next step is to add all the cleating around here to hold the speaker baffle in the front and to hold the back door panel uh, in place. Um, then after that we're going to do some routing on the corners and this will really start to look like an amplifier cabinet. Now for the cleats I took that furring strip and cut it into a three quarter inch cross sectional piece and then I will cut pieces to length that will fit inside the cabinet all the way around the perimeter here and recessed in a little bit to allow for the speaker baffle and as you can see when the baffle goes in here I'll be able to screw it into these uh, cleats and it will hold it snugly and squarely in the mouth of the cabinet. Uh, I cut the cleats to for an interference fit uh, and these are not attached yet and I won't attach them until after I made the speaker baffle I know exactly how thick it's going to be and how far I want it to be recessed in past the lip of the cabinet. Also, I might add that if the box joint's a little too intimidating to you, you can do cleated joints in the corners. In other words, don't do the box joint, but attach the cleat to, say, the bottom board, and then attach the side to the cleat and the bottom board, and use glue, and this will give you a nice strong cabinet without the finger joints. Okay, now it's time to... Uh, construct the speaker baffle and I'm going to save you from what is always a beginner's a huge mistake and that is you forget to leave room on the speaker baffle for the grill cloth that's going to wrap around on the sides and for the leather or tolex that's going to wrap around uh, on the perimeter pieces. You're going to have a total then of two grill cloths and two leathers on uh, each dimension this way and then two grill cloths and two leathers going that way. So we cut two pieces of each and then check their thickness and it comes out to about an eighth of an inch. So what you need to do then is cut your baffle where it's small enough that you have a full one eighth of an inch clearance here and one eighth of an inch at the top. When it's centered then uh, you will have exactly the right amount of room for the grill cloth and for the leather. And believe me, if you forget to leave this space, uh, you will really regret it when you try to put the speaker baffle into the upholstered cabinet. Next we're going to cut some 1 8 inch slats like this with which we're going to frame the speaker baffle so that it spaces the grill cloth away from the baffle surface. Now with those 8 inch strips aligned perfectly along the edges of the baffle, not attached to it yet, okay, because that would interfere with uh, us cutting the hole for the speaker, we're going to use them to center and position our speaker. Then we'll draw a circle around the perimeter of the speaker and uh, prepare to cut the hole. Then using either a compass or a ruler, find the exact center of the circle you drew around the perimeter of the speaker. Now measure the actual uh, cone diameter of the speaker. In this case it's 9 inches on a 10 inch speaker. And then using your uh, compass draw a exact 9 inch diameter hole and that will be our guide 
for cutting out uh, the hole for our speaker. Then uh, clamp down your board after you've drilled a pilot hole here and then using my least favorite tool in the world, the saber saw, we're going to cut around that inner circle. Now using that outer line that we drew around the perimeter of the speaker, we're going to place the speaker back on the baffle, get the output lugs going absolutely straight down, and then we're going to draw a, a pencil spot where each of the mounting holes will be drilled. Okay, now that we've marked the location, we're going to drill holes that are appropriate for this type of uh, captive nut that we're going to press in uh, to hold the speaker screws. Then if you have a drill press, use it to press those uh, captive nuts into place into the wood baffle. Then, in my case, using 1032 machine screws, one inch long, uh, with flat washers and lock washers, I'm going to do a test installation of the speaker uh, onto the baffle and be sure that the screws don't protrude out too far. And this looks just about right. Okay, so now we're ready for the next step. Next step, you flip the baffle over and then glue and staple, if you have a stapler, the little spacers for the grill cloth to the front of the baffle. Well, that about does it for the speaker baffle. Uh, this is the speaker side of it. And here's the uh, outward facing side with the spacers for the grill cloth and the captive nuts all installed. And now we're going to use this to position and uh, finally install the cleats in the cabinet. I'm going to recess the speaker baffle about 3 16 So I made a little spacer here and I go all the way around the baffle to be sure that it is the same, recess the same all the way around. Then I'm going to remove the baffle and install the cleats exactly where they are. Okay, I've drawn reference lines for the cleats. I've numbered them so that I can put them back in exactly the same order. Now I'm going to remove them, glue them, and nail them into place. Now using the reference lines that I drew here on the inside, I'm going to glue and nail in the cleats. Now the cleats are all nailed and glued in place. I'm going to set the baffle back and double check the recess. And then we're going to draw the location for the drill holes for the screws that are going to hold the front of baffle in place. So now that the holes are drilled, uh, the baffle is essentially done, except for one last step, and that is to paint the facing part of it here flat black. Otherwise, uh, you'll be able to see uh, particularly this light area down here and these shiny uh, hardware pieces and all through the grill cloth, and it'll really be distracting. So let's paint it flat black. Well, there's the finished uh, speaker baffle. It's painted flat black. The paint is dried, it's ready to go, and now we'll focus our attention to the rear panel. Before you go too far with the cabinet, it's good to test fit all of the components and make sure that you have good clearance. And as, the, as you can see in this case, everything is just fine. Um, next, I'm going to design the back door. I think I'll do something real fancy with kind of an arch that comes up here to allow me to reach in here if I have to uh, connect and disconnect speakers into the uh, speaker uh, jack right there. Looking pretty good. And here's the front view and as you can see it looks pretty professional here with that flat black uh, speaker baffle. So uh, things are coming together well.